Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Um, I am here with the amazing Nathan Fox. My name is Ren. Um, and so we're going to be here at the same time for the next three days. Yes, we are. How is everyone doing? Did you learn a lot from Kathleen, if you tuned in? Cool. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, as always, we'll have a daily creative challenge today and tomorrow. And then on Friday, we are doing portfolio reviews. So that should be a lot of fun. And um, I already see people popping up saying, hi, yeah. Nathan. I Hello, appreciate friends. it. We see your, uh, we see your posts. So yeah. thank you, guys. Yeah. So um, for the daily creative challenge today, um, it's to uh, share an inspirational quote and uh, design your quote in Photoshop CC. And then about an hour into our uh, stream, we're going to review those posts that you have posted. And um, we're really excited to see your work. Um, and then half hour into the stream, we're going to have a giveaway, a chat and win giveaway. We are giving away this Percy Chen poster that was made in Adobe Sketch. Oh, so, and this is my first time seeing it. Isn't That's it beautiful? beautiful. Yeah. That is gorgeous. So we'll be giving it away on the half hour mark. Um, so again, I am here with Nathan Fox, And today, Nathan is going to be giving a uh, demo on color. Uh, Nathan is a master of color. Well, um, you got to lower the expectations no, a little no, bit. No, no, I'm not. You're amazing. <laughs> we'll lower the expectations <laughs> and then see if we can pull it back up. All right, up. all right. So keep, keep low expectations and then we'll go up from there. Um, Nathan, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, sure, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm a painter. I'm a painter at heart. And uh, thank goodness the, the uh, art industry is where it is because uh, I started out in animation. Uh, back in, oh my gosh, I started working professionally in 1994. So it's been a little while. And I'm actually gonna show you guys, cause I, I got into animation, I wanted to be a painter, I wanted to do, uh, uh, I wanted to do imaginative artwork, and that's right at the time the animation boom started. So there's a little bit of preparation meets opportunity and luck involved in that. And I'm actually gonna show you guys in a little bit uh, man, I was sweating and struggling at the beginning of my career trying to use color to connect with an audience and to keep a job, you know, to, to show that I was the right person for the job. So I'm actually going to be showing you guys in just a little bit one of my very first color assignments. Uh, and so I've been in animation ever since. Uh, I, I love to get out and sketch, paint the landscape. I've tried to keep a little teaching up uh, as, uh, as much as I can. So I've also been teaching for the last 15 years on the ground and, uh, and online, uh, uh, finding a little bit of time outside of my pr production schedule. So it's been a good run. Yeah. Um, we had mentioned earlier that somebody was going to point out that you were using an HP laptop. So David says, <laughs> first artist on Adobe Live using an HP laptop. It's, it's true. Um, well, I was, uh, I was joking with Ren a little bit earlier. Um, Mac is a fantastic. Uh, Apple's a fantastic company. They are absolutely stunning. I got a little bit, uh, you know, uh, Mac users are, are creative hipsters and PC users are losers. <laughs> as much as I love those commer commercials, big John Hodgman fan, I kind of rebelled against that. Uh, but mostly, uh, I do, I work on a PC. But the reason for that actually is, uh, at the studios, up until just a few years ago, the studios I worked for, uh, uh, DreamWorks, Disney, and, and other places. Their in-house workstations were PC, and I wanted a seamless jump in between work and in between going home, same hotkeys, same, same interface. So I stuck with it, and uh, I'm ingrained in it. I'm still there, and we'll see where that takes me in upcoming years. I'm not opposed to switching one of these years if somebody gives me a good enough reason. Well, uh, let's take a look at some of your work on your all website. Right. Um, if you all want to take a look at Nathan's website, it's NathanFalks.com. NathanFalks.com. There's so. also NathanFalksArt.com, yeah. which is a little bit more of a blog format. And that's also your Instagram handle. Yes, it is. So you can follow him there. Uh, so I picked some of the images off your website. Um, just to preface, you've worked on, I want to gush a little bit, you've worked on some of my favorite films from my childhood. Thank you. Spirit, um, The Prince of Egypt, The Road to El Dorado. Like, some amazing films, and that that was the building blocks of my childhood. I watched those movies constantly All when right. I was a kid. Um, so this is a, an image 
from Rio 2. Yes, it is. Right? Um, and this is a scene where they're seeing the forest fire going on. Really, really beautiful piece of color here. Uh, what film is this from? That's from Shrek. Oh, okay. That's actually, um, I worked on some of the Shrek projects. I was the first artist on Shrek 4. I was down in the basement, literally down in the basement, uh, because they were opening up a new area for mm -hmm. the production to go to and being the first artist, they didn't have a space for me. So this is the very first piece of artwork f done f on the movie for mm -hmm. a new location. Is this what the basement looked like? I, I, I think I drew a little inspiration from yeah. my setting, yes. <laughs> There's another one, this looks like the Road to El Dorado. Road to El Dorado, yeah. yeah. And also give credit, you know, back in those days, mm -hmm. we also worked with the layout department. So those early paintings are a combination of the layout providing a beautiful line drawing. Mm -hmm. And then as a painter, it's my job to bring the color, the light, that kind of design to it and bring it to a finish. It's P Puss in Boots? It is. Yeah. Legend of Puss in Boots. We had a good time on that project. Yeah. I love this image of him about to fight Humpty Dumpty. This is Prince of Egypt. I think you're going to talk about that one a little later. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the story behind that painting. Yeah. It, was a, it, it was a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears. Looking forward to that. Um, this is from Shark Tale. Shark Tale. Yeah. And this is from the Pirate Fairy. Um, I wanted to share this because um, I think it's a really interesting look at how um, you see the sequ sequencing for films and how you have to show the step-by-step step and show the motion before you even get to see the, the film. Yeah, and we do, for some of these shows, we'll do, we call these color key paintings, mm -hmm. and we'll do one of those for every single scene in the film. Sometimes when a scene is expansive, covers different locations. We'll do three or four of them just for one scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I must have, I, I did uh, somewhere in the range, nearly 400 of those for that particular project. And uh, it's what I love to do. I love to splash around the color and light and the, the composition, the, the mm -hmm. uh, lighting composition. So it was a good project. Cool. Uh, Val says she's fangirling right now. All right. You've influenced a lot of people in this chat, I think. Um, well, so every, every time my kids see any animated movie, they say, Dad, did you make this one? <laughs> you know, as if I yeah, made all the them. movie. Yeah. And, uh, you are Disney. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if DreamWorks. I actually worked on it, yeah. I, I've just gotten so, yeah, I, I made it. I just, <laughs> yeah, just, I, that was, that was just me. Just go into it. <laughs> I um, go with it. Yeah. Daryl says he's working uh, his way to Nathan's class, um, but he needs more practice before he, he does it. I think yeah. he's referring to schoolism. Yeah, I teach. Yeah. Uh, uh, currently, I, I teach online at schoolism. I, yeah. I won't admit, you know, that I'm able to teach in my pajamas, uh, teaching out of my home studio nice. online. But um, yeah, being doing that actually, uh, it lets me still teach because uh, I keep a pretty rigorous production schedule with animation. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, I love joining up with you guys, and we get uh, we get to meet with people from all over the world to do that. That's yeah. the great thing about the online platform. And these people, uh, I can see uh, I can see you guys' posts on screen. Uh, you guys are joining us from all over the world. Thank yeah. you for being with us. So you wanna you wanna jump in? I Let's will do jump it. in. Okay. Well, we can flip over to my screen yeah. and uh, we can talk about because our theme, as you guys know, is color, mm -hmm. uh, near and dear to my heart because uh, uh, it's so painful. Uh, so I want to walk you through, you guys out there checking in, uh, undoubtedly you're at all different levels in the learning curve. Some of you are beginners, some of you are pros, maybe early in your career, you know, wanting, hoping to get a leg up. And the thing that's common, even if you're a beginner or if you're already a pro, the beginners have to have some simple ideas that they can build on. Color's so complicated. The pros, you guys know, you've got to bang out ideas, the production schedule, lots of comps. You have to come up with simple ideas that you can build on, it's the same thing. So that's why I want to start with today is go over a couple of simple ideas mm -hmm. I think will help do that. And then uh, just a heads up, because we want you to guys to check in tomorrow, and we're going to be going all the way through Thursday. Tomorrow, uh, after we get these uh, foundational ideas out, we're going to be digging into emotion, the emotional nature of color. Because uh, I'll, I'll tell you this right now, because I think it's a good preference for uh, prefer, uh, preface. Preface. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good preface for any discussion on color. Uh, 
No matter what we're not yet good at, the moment we develop the ability to reach out and connect with our audience, you know, that gut emotional level, the moment you can do that, you are a real artist. That's what we're going for here. So I have a color wheel up, and I just want to jump to a little splash of color. Just threw this up in, in Photoshop, and these are a bunch of different colors, no relationship to each other in their hue, but they do all have one thing in common. They're all the same value. They're all 50%. So imagine if you only had black and white vision, this is what you would see. Absolutely nothing, that blank 50% gray. So that's quite the amazing palette to work with, and there's so much we can do with it. And so I promised, uh, I'd mentioned my, my first animated project. I was brand new. Uh, I was a couple years out of art school already. I'd actually been working in theme park show design. But DreamWorks came calling, could not miss that opportunity. Uh, there were amazing experienced painters on the Prince of Egypt. I saw their work. I got to show my portfolio, and I said, I've got to work on this project. It's, it's epic, it's color, it's light, it's everything that I wanted to do. But then here's the problem. Uh, you actually have to produce. You have to come up with something, oh my gosh. So uh, I started on this project and uh, they gave me an assignment early on, frankly, before I felt I was ready. They gave me one of the sequences of the movie, the Royal Banquet sequence, to do the color keys for to establish the color design, the lighting design, and the composition. And there were storyboard sketches done, but that's all I had to work with, and the rest was on me, and the entire studio was meant to follow me. I don't think they knew how inexperienced <laughs> I was. so intimidating. I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they, giving me that assignment, they didn't realize. Oh my gosh, guys, talk about sweating, <laughs> because uh, I'll, I'll try and keep this story short, but this might, uh, let's see if we can amp the pressure up, the weight on my shoulders a little bit. Uh, in my contract, uh, as a standard, there was a six month kind of trial period. If at the end of that six months, they don't like what I'm doing and where I'm going, boom, thank you, but it isn't working out, and my little career is over before it started. So I knew that was coming. I knew if I crashed and burned on this big assignment, yikes. So, I had one idea, and one idea only. It's a basic design principle, unity with variety. I wanna throw this idea out to you because it'll be invaluable the entirety of your career. Real simple, and that's the great thing about it. It's a foundational design principle, foundational for color, uh, variety. And so you see on the, your screen, you see a splash of color under variety. Uh, and then unity, you know, kind of same, same, same. And then at the end, you see unity with variety. Because variety is fantastic, exciting, but there are no relationships there. There's no particular meaning in variety. Unity is great, purposeful, unified. It can get a little boring, kind of same, same, same. And so you combine those two things. You have structure through unity, purpose through unity, but you've got to catch the eye of your audience at the same time. You've got to have variety. So, unity with variety. So I, I thought that back on the Prince of Egypt then, I just started doing these little comps. And uh, uh, I know you do some traditional work. Do you yeah. do acrylics much? No, I don't. I'm actually really bad with acrylics. Okay, because yeah. I know you, you do your own yeah, printmaking, I, Ren. And... Yeah, I use a lot of like markers, okay. um, Tombow markers, to do overlays, yeah. like to see how the colors blend together. Um, but acrylics, mm, that's that's <laughs> definitely frustrating for me. Well, the, the acrylics was our bread and butter, mm -hmm. and it's a forgiving medium in the sense that you can keep layering and, and building up the layers, but when it dries, it, it's permanent. It's there, you can eat your dinner off of it. <laughs> this is pre-digital, guys. This is uh, 1990, this is by the, it'd be 1996. I think Photoshop was invented 91. I think so. And wasn't, and there were I a couple. <laughs> we had, uh, we had, one concept artist that was doing a little bit of Photoshop work back then. Other than that, it was pretty much unheard of there in the early mid 90s. And so everything was traditional, painted in acrylics. I did all these sketches. I was so nervous. I stayed till midnight that night. Guys, don't work for free, but I don't know, there might be a night when you're desperate enough. I worked till midnight doing all these comps. I came back in the next day and did more of them. 
uh, just trying to get an interesting unification of color and then pulling a pop out of the middle. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a scene with columns where uh, the pharaoh comes out into the spotlight. I was so nervous, I tried everything that I could think of, Ren. Uh, so. How many did you do you think you did in uh, total? Val uh, asks uh, if you had to repaint it just over and over again, and it looks like it. Yeah, it, I, I, I totally, I so look like I'm in a panic right here. Because <laughs> I did at least four, mm -hmm. five, six more than this. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to pick out the very best. So yeah, I did all those. And then I was clever enough, and I painted them on, on individual panels. Mm -hmm. They're just tiny, tiny little sketches trying to get the ball rolling. I was clever enough to uh, pick what I thought were the best five or six, mm -hmm. take them to the art, direct, uh, art director and say, here's a few sketches, some ideas. You know, I did on a napkin. Uh, I wasn't here till midnight last night. I know exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm not desperate, um, but here's a few ideas and I want to see if anything, you know, strikes you as a potential direction. Well, there was one of them that I liked. It was actually the upper right-hand corner that had, uh, they thought the warms and cools were working. So on the basis of that, they provided a beautiful uh, layout department, a line drawing and I did my, my first painting here for the sequence. Well, it went over. I hope you guys like it. All these years later, um, uh, we, we put it up there for the banquet sequence. The art director, you know, gave it her check mark. The director liked it. It made it in the movie, you know? So, uh, whew, wipe the sweat yeah. off on my brow. Uh, uh, got a painting in the movie. Yeah. Heidi asks, um, did this establish uh, or influence the coloring for the rest of the film? Uh, it absolutely, absolutely did. So I did the entire sequence. This was the color, uh, the, the foundation for the sequence. Wow. On the basis of that, I did color key sketches for the entire sequence and, uh, and built it up for there. But let's go back to that point about unity with variety mm -hmm. being so important. So to make that point, I did a, I, I took the image and just in Photoshop, I just put a filter over it. So it's only warm. Now it's only unity. And you know, there's a place for that. Uh, there are moments you might want something like that. But if we don't do much more than that, it rapidly gets boring, right? And so uh, this is unity and it has its limitations. Now let's take a look at variety and hold on to your hats because variety with no unity can sometimes, yikes. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, that's <laughs> right. It's very uh, harsh on the eyeballs. Very harsh. But isn't it funny to think about, you know, you, me, Ren, and all you guys out there, um, we don't have to have gone to art school. We just look at something loud like that and we say, oh, you know, I don't even want to look at it. It's loud. It's mm -hmm. garish. It, it hurts my eyes. Is it Ira Glass that had the, the uh, quote about, this is very relevant for our, mm. our contest, about um, everyone has good taste and even like if you haven't gone to art school, you know what's good and what's not and what you like. Um, so this is easy to point out, this is very harsh. Yeah, because you know, it's wired in. The brain likes meaningful relationships, right? The day that you're born, you start looking for, you know, um, that shape is soft, that shape hurts, that thing tastes good. You know, you look for the meaningful relationships and your brain is always looking for that. When your brain doesn't see any meaningful relationships, it says, nope, no thank you. And that's why all of us know, you know, I just dialed up the saturation until it push breaks everything apart. And that's all variety, too much. So let's just get back and hopefully breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, you know, unity with variety, mm -hmm. hopefully creating an exciting splash of color. So uh, that little simple idea launched my career. I know a lot of you, that's, that's what you're here for, right? Uh, you want to find opportunities, you want to do uh, your own work the way you want to do it, but you also want to make some kind of a connection with your intended audience. Mm -hmm. And that's why this foundational principle is universal. Yeah. So I wanted to start with that. Uh, for those of you in the chat, can you tell us where you are? Um, if that you're would be pursuing fantastic. an art career, we'd yeah. love to hear it. Um, somebody asked what that countdown message is in the bottom corner of the screen, and that um, is our chat and win. Um, it looks kind of ominous. It does, it does. We're, we're counting down to a good thing. So we're giving away an awesome poster um, if you come into the chat and tell us, you know, where you are in your art career. Um, start talking, start engaging. Um, at the 30 minute mark, you gotta come in for the chat hype and get excited and um, we'll be giving away that poster to a lucky winner. All right, it's a beautiful poster. Yeah. 
Oh, All right. So coming up in 10 minutes. Until then? Well, yeah, so the next simple statement then, uh, another foundational thing, a lot of you know this, but it's good kind of to have the foundation driven in. Mm -hmm. uh, three properties of color, hue, saturation, and value. And uh, hue, you know, the color, whatever the color is, the saturation, the level of purity or, or saturation, the value, the relative lightness or darkness. Mm -hmm. And this is great news because color is so complicated, it's crippling, but it only has three properties. And so uh, when you're stuck, if you just think about these three things, you're much more likely to get back on track. So I wanna show some examples. Uh, I wanna jump to another project here with hue, saturation, and value because these three properties, it's everything. Everything you see is a combination of these three properties. I mean, there is nothing else. That's it as far as vision is concerned. So let's do it again, uh, variety. This is variety of hue, variety of saturation, variety of value, it's all variety. Well, it's an exciting patch of color, but it has no meaning. So let's unify it now. We'll go all the way back over to unity again as another example. We're gonna unify the hue. So let's push everything, let's say, towards blue, towards cool to unify. We'll unify the saturation. So let's kind of neutralize, just calm things down to more of a neutral. And let's unify the value instead of the black and the nearly whites in here. Let's take it down to kind of a middle range of value. And that gives us this. Well, it's calm. Uh, it's quiet, there's a little bit of variety, a little bit, you know, a little bit to get interested in there. But let's see if we can bring a little variety back into it in a meaningful way. So let's pop over and do this. Well, it's a little bit more exciting to look at, right? We have the complementary nature, the contrasting nature of the yellows, the magentas and the purple, and the purple kind of swings around and maybe points you to that little patch of yellow. Well, it's actually based on uh, something I did for mm -hmm. the movie Shark Tale. We had a lot of, we had so much fun, you know, uh, well, a lot of pain and suffering too. I, I'll tell you the truth, guys. These projects are never easy. They are a blast and they are bone crushly, crushing, crippling, uh, all at the same time. But then when the movie comes out, if the audience loves it, uh, it's uh, worth it, in it the end. was so, How to Train Your Dragon was that way. It was in production yeah. for seven years and, and was a bone crushing, production, you know, to, to get it on track. But when I went to see the movie mm -hmm. with friends at a regular movie theater at the end, people clapped and cheered. It was like, I was like, I almost wanted to stand up and thank everyone for their support, yeah. you know, and they'd just be like down in front, you know, uh, nobody, nobody would care, but mm -hmm. uh, it made all of that pain worthwhile. But in Shark Tale, you know, we're down in the coral reef with all of those colors and it was an opportunity to take advantage of. And so uh, this is one example and it's back to that unity with variety idea. That's just the foundation of so much of what we do. I wanna just show you guys one more example. Jumping forward in my career, something from the, uh, the Legend of Puss in Boots. So this was a really complicated scene for me to tackle with the characters. There's so much texture and little details everywhere. And to keep the whole thing manageable uh, was a huge challenge. And so let me show you, I love doing this little sprinkly stuff, little bits of color, uh, little bits of color excitement in work. And here's another example if we zoom in close up. I love doing that, but I'm painfully aware that that is secondary. If I get caught up in the little stuff, I'm dead. True statement, mm -hmm. Ren? Yeah, definitely, you gotta think about the big picture and then go into the nitty gritty. If I don't do that, I am so dead. So let's go back, let's look at, we have hue saturation value, mm -hmm. let's look at it in value only. I put a little noise reduction filter over this just to blend away the smaller details and textures. Well, take a look, my only salvation with this image, you see how I've unified everything that's in shadow so that mm -hmm. I can pop out what's in light. That's unity and then popping out some variety in value. And then we'll get to the hue and saturation. I'm keeping that noise reduction filter up. Mm -hmm. And you can see uh, the audience is meant to look, this is a, a old world style hotel. And the audience is meant to look at the desk and so you can really see that's where the contrast is. The eye is being led there. There's a few secondary contrasts. The characters over in the one corner, the, uh, the, the musician over off center a little bit there. And I'm using color hue and color saturation to create those contrasts. And again, letting the other stuff unify. 
Once again, Unity with Variety helped me solve a very complicated piece. Okay, so that is the foundation of what we're doing. So with that, uh, if you guys would like, I could we could kind of live demo some of these ideas. Yeah. Shall, shall we do it? In. All right. All right, well, I have my tablet here and I'm gonna pop up Photoshop uh, for you guys. So let's jump on over. Uh, Krista asks, what is the research process for lighting? Good question. Uh, we definitely, uh, at the beginning of each film, uh, in addition to tons of sketching, sometimes before we even start sketching out ideas, uh, somebody, uh, artist, art director, production designer, usually art director and production designer, they'll grab images, just inspirational images. You know, uh, this part of the film could have this kind of a feel. Mm -hmm. This part of the film might go into this kind of mood and they'll do screen grabs from movies and do an inspiration pass so people have an immediate idea of where the project might be going. That's a good kind of way to ground yourself, to mm -hmm. have like a springboard to come up from. So that is pretty typical at the beginning of a show. It's a good question. Okay, well, I can tell you what I'm up to oh, here. What kind of scene we have here? Yeah, so uh, themed a, a little bit on uh, Asian architecture. And I took the liberty to just do this little sketch and actually create some masks ahead of time. Uh, we have a limited amount of time today, of course, and I want to be able to dive right in the color. So let me show you what I've done with this drawing. I've just created a few masks, and when I say masks, nothing fancy. You literally take the uh, lasso tool and, you know, uh, make a selection and mm -hmm. then go over and select, save the selection, and you save it as a channel. And I have, let me jump over to my channels palette. And so I did that for the sky, the land, and then mm -hmm. a little bit of a foreground element there. And so here I can show you, uh, and deselect that. And so I have that already established. That's gonna give me some shapes to work with. I don't always work this way. There is no one proper way to work. There's no one good approach. Every location, every scene deserves its own treatment. But this is a good way to start. If you create some interesting shapes, mask them off, it lets you block things in quickly, really, uh, really lay into it. So there's the sky, there's the land, and uh, here's a little bit of a foreground element. So I'm just gonna pop those in and out and just do a little bit of painting into those. Okay, so let me just go back to layers and uh, keep my drawing over top. Give myself a layer to work with. And you know, I don't use a lot of fancy brushes. This is a standard, uh, standard Photoshop brush. I threw a few things at it. You know, I just have a little bit, uh, a little bit of texture turned on to it and uh, I have pressure sensitivity turned on to it. Nothing fancy, uh, but it's something that gives me, uh, gives me a nice little organic, mm -hmm. kind of a pressure sensitive stroke. Okay. So we'll jump back into our layer and let's see how much time we have. Do we have about 30 minutes to to work this baby out, is that, yes. is that right? And we'll you're gonna jump in? We'll have a little bit in. of time okay. yeah. Okay. Now we do have, uh, 41 seconds, 40 and counting until, until the chat and win. Okay, so yeah. that'll that'll be perfect. Yeah. So yeah, we're down to 30 seconds for the mm -hmm. chat. So uh, I'll just tell you this, I'm gonna start with the sky, get a transition in there, and then I'm gonna block in the foreground and that will let me launch the image. And so uh, while she's going over the chat and win, uh, I'll just pick a start couple of colors. In. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick the colors I'm gonna use and then when that comes up, uh, we'll dive in and we'll get this bad boy blocked in for you. Perfect. Four seconds, three, two, one. one. We got fireworks going <laughs> up fireworks, in the background. Right. Yay, yeah. <laughs> embrace the roof. Jump into the chat, guys. Start talking about anything. Um, talk about where you at, where you're from. Um, and you have about a minute to jump in. Hello, hello, hello. 
Hi, Britt. Hi, Anita. Hi, Jeff. Karsten. Frank. Samantha. Gretchen. We got a lot of people jumping in. All right. Hello, hello, hello. All right, the screen is really moving yeah. now. Hello from Portland. Hello from Missouri, Pittsburgh. Saw someone from Egypt earlier. Tuning in from all over the world. Berlin. All right. You guys are going. Let me show you that poster one more time. So this poster is by artist Percy Chen, and it was done in Sketch on the iPad. And whoever is the winner gets this beautiful poster sent to them. I would want that up on my wall. Uh, yeah, yes, I would. Yeah, and you, you guys, you probably see us staring blankly just off of camera. We have a mm -hmm. screen right here. And uh, yeah, every you guys are you guys are moving mm -hmm. now. This is moving fast. We have a winner, Mark Furlong. Congratulations! Right. Congrats, Mark. Uh, yeah, you're getting that poster sent to you. Enjoy. Yeah. So, Excellent. Shall yeah, I dive? Let's shall jump I dive right in. in? Okay. All right. So, uh, what I want to do, uh, I'm going to just throw throw colors at this. So, I want to get a transition as if there's lighting coming in directionally, and the foreground's pretty much gonna be in shadow. So I wanna go from a, kind of a cyan into an ultramarine blue and then come around and transition into the uh, foreground with some just dark warms. And then what I wanna do after that, that'll give us a good kind of warm, cool, unified block in, and then pop out a few key colors to give it a little bit of, uh, little bit of variety. So here we go, I have that mask up. So boom, 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 we'll just fill this in and I'll just slowly shift it towards a little mm -hmm. bit more of an ultramarine, a little bit more blue. And uh, for those that are new to masks in Photoshop, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you toggle between them? Yeah, so I just keep in the channels, I, I have it up, it's hidden, mm -hmm. uh, Control H or Command H if you're on a Mac. Mm -hmm. And so I just hold down the Control key, mm -hmm. Command key if you're on a Mac, I believe. <laughs> And I just, I, I just click, so there's the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, let me deselect it. So I hold down control and just click the sky. Okay. And uh, I wanna switch to my land or my foreground and uh, they just pop right up. Mm -hmm. And you're just using one of the basic brushes in Photoshop. Uh, Jordan asks if you have a go-to brush pack, but it sounds like you're, you're good with the defaults. Do uh, you use any others? Yeah, yeah, so I'm glad you asked yeah. that because people can see on my screen uh, I, I use pretty standard setups. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone has their own setup for, for brushes. Uh, some people like doing it as tool presets, some people mm -hmm. don't. I definitely do. So I have, this brush I'm using is my go-to brush. I might use it 80, 90% of the time just to mm -hmm. block everything in to really paint. Uh, but then I have a few other brushes I use commonly, maybe five that I use. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's specialty brushes to do this and that texture, that shape that sort of a thing. And so you can see here my tool presets. I have them all labeled and uh, I have them numbered and labeled, most commonly used ones at the top. And there's a lot of them, but I'll tell you, some of these hardly ever get used. But um, I love the naming that you have going on yeah, here too. I hope I don't have any embarrassing names in there. Uh, now everyone's gonna look, <laughs> but. Um, Sorry for pointing that out. <laughs> it's like when you save uh, multiple files in Photoshop and you're like, final. Final one. Final this is two. definitely the final. And final, I do, final, yeah, final. I do final, final yeah, for my, of course, and, I and then too. final, final, I like, wait, nope, there's a problem yeah. in final, final. And then I just give up and then start edition. mashing the keyboard and then hope, hope I know where the file is. Yeah, the and then you have to start look at it by, by save time because yes. you don't know anymore which really is the final. Exactly. Okay. So we'll keep blocking in here. Just make sure mm -hmm. my transitions. Okay, now I'm just going to invert that. So I can do the land. And let me just pick a dark brown. Let me just go kind of a red, red brown. Come down here. See, that should, yeah, that should do the trick. But I'm just gonna very quickly give myself the shape. And just a reminder for those of you just joining in, um, we have Nathan Fox here. He's dropping the knowledge about color and environments. And um, we have a new countdown in the bottom right corner. Um, you have 25, less than 25 minutes um, to submit your um, challenge. Um, 
So the daily creative challenge today um, is to share an inspirational quote and you can create this and design this quote in Photoshop. Um, so submit those and we'll review them um, in 24 minutes. So I'm starting to think already about my color variety here. And so uh, something like cherry blossom, cherry blossom tree in the background might be a nice little accent in the middle because ultimately you can see that there is uh, this suggestion of a character here and ultimately the eye is going to be meant to come back to that area. So just a little something here and I'll do a few bits of visual interest to bring the eye back into that area. But already we can pop over to our foreground and so I'll go back to my channels palette and pop that up. And I'll just, it's still there, but I'm gonna hide it. And I'll just come a little darker here. And block that in. Brandon asks, um, how do you tradition, transition from traditional landscape painting to digital? You know, uh, traditional painting, I think, makes one a better digital painter. Uh, digital painting actually makes me a better traditional painter. Mm -hmm. uh, what I love about uh, digital painting and Photoshop, so those three properties of color uh, and painting is manipulating those three things. So in Photoshop, you can endlessly manipulate how you handle the hue, saturation, and value. And so digital painting has a real ideal in it, the way you're able to just endlessly manipulate those things. With paint, you've got to really wrangle the paint, wrangle the medium. but. Um, paint is very different than your screen. Your screen is a light source. And so some people will come up on digital painting and get really good at it, but then go out to paint traditionally for the first time. It's a disaster, you know, no offense to them. They'll be the first to tell you because they don't have the range of value and color. It's just reflective paint rather than a vivid, wide light source. So they're used to working with this range because it's a light source, and then they start having to work with something that only has this range because it's just you know paint, it's only a reflection. But the great thing about that is paint forces you to find the simple statement, the simple solution to be very organized and work within those limitations, and that makes you a better artist across the board. Working within limitations forces you to be clever, a little bit more creative. Uh, so I've, I did come up traditional before digital, but I still get out with the traditional. And I, I love to escape digital to paint traditionally, and then the paint becomes a bit of a mess and then start <laughs> craving digital again and get back to digital. It's kind of a hamster wheel, but it keeps me productive. You know, I jump from one to the other and, and love it. Keeps you on your, on your toes too, I it's think. It's absolutely true. Okay, and I want to invert that. I want to get a little dark inside of that doorway. That'll be good enough for that. And then I want to get a little bit of atmosphere in here. So let's go back to the original land selection. And I'm going to get just a soft brush. There it is. I'm just going to put a little bit of a glow. This is kind of a backlit area. And I think I should probably do this on a separate layer. Let's do that. OK. So I'll just let this kind of glow in a little bit here. That suggestion of atmosphere. Mm. It's really magical. Get kind of dreamy mm -hmm. with this. And at this point, I can just take the drawing off. I'm, I'm probably not going to need it. OK. And I want to get a little, do the same thing down in here. This is back a little further, this area. I want to get that a little more cyan. I don't want it. See, back to that unity with variety thing. Mm -hmm. If I get too purple in this area where I'm painting now, then the purples will be less special. So I want to shift back towards hue. And maybe go just a little darker. I want to, want to keep a nice contrast in there. Uh, Arthur asks um, how to find the best color combinations that pr project the mood of the scene. I'm sure it, for you it's become really intuitive, um, but when you're starting out, mm -hmm. how do you think, what's the best way to, to do that? Uh, Arthur, I have the perfect answer for you. Um, join us tomorrow. 
That's exactly the topic for tomorrow. Uh, and, and I hope uh, choosing, choosing color palettes that might elicit a variety of moods, that's a topic for tomorrow. So I, I hope Great. to cover that reasonably yeah. thoroughly or Same. at least uh, get, the, get the ideas out tomorrow. Yeah, definitely tune in for the rest of the week because Nathan has much more to teach us. Okay, so let's get some greens in there mm -hmm. uh, for the foliage. And so I want to get my foreground selection up. And let's just pick the color that's there. I want to go a little lighter, a little greener. That looks about right. Okay, let's just get a little local color. And that's an important distinction. Local color simply means the color the object is, you know, a green leaf, a red house. And then uh, everything we see along with those three properties of color, the other simple way of thinking of it is, what is the local color of the object and what is the color and quality of the light hitting that? And if you have a good grasp of how that works, in the end, you can render anything. So let's get those up and I wanna throw some bushes over here. So let me, let me just block in some shapes over here as well. So just some bushes, maybe a little bit of a drop shadow, get a dark down in there. And then I want to get some of that green back in. And I want to throw a little suggestion of perspective on the ground. Uh, a, a tip for you guys, you know, when you're doing a sketch, if you find little spots to get a firm foundation of perspective, elements going properly in perspective, that can give it a good structure and make a loose sketch feel like a, a finished loose sketch. So I just want to give a little suggestion of a ground plane there. In fact, I might hit the history and take a step back and hit that a little bit more accurately. Just some strokes that give us the lay of the land and then I wanna get uh, some cool back in there. That's a ground plane there. Again, I don't wanna get too overusing the purple but uh, that skylight's gonna come down and lay on the ground. Kyle uh, Webster says this is, this is too much knowledge and definitely gonna have to watch a replay later. I uh, agree. It, it, it'll be up, right? It'll yeah. be up. Um, You'll be able to check it out on YouTube and also um, it'll be on Behance as well. Yeah, it was, it was Kyle, you, you said. Yes. Yeah, Kyle, we're, we're up here trying desperately not to embarrass ourselves <laughs> because uh, nothing ever, things live on forever on, on the internet, so uh, thanks, thanks for the props. <laughs> okay, so I want to throw, uh, there's such an influence of sky here. I want to have skylight coming down and influencing top planes. And so that's what I'm starting to do here. I want to get that back into the landscape as well. So. I'll bring my selection back up for the land. And then I would just want to push that blue. Anything that's facing upwards is going to catch a little bit of that. Uh, here's a flattened version of the same brush. It just will give us a little bit of form. And there's going to be some tiling. There's going to be a lay of the land there, so to speak. And let me subtract. I'm going to subtract the foreground out of that so I can keep it clean. And just get a little of that cool light where I need it. And I'm going to say there's like a roof or something over here catching some light. 
So a little suggestion of stuff going on. Brandon asks, um, is, is there a length of time that's too long for working on an environment like this? Uh, how much time should you, you limit to something like this? Oh man, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> it, it's always so difficult to answer because yeah. um, I, I've been on shows where my, uh, my best speed ever is to do maybe 30 color key paintings in a week, like for a movie to do 30 scenes. And that's kind of kind of crazy, but that's, that's the best I can do. Mm -hmm. But there have been times when I've only gotten two or three done in an entire week because you do it and then there's notes and then you do revisions and then you show it to the director and the director says, it's great, but we just changed to nighttime, story just changed. So we need you to do a nighttime version now. And, uh, but it's good. Uh, it's good to get your eye ideas down quickly and simply like we're doing here so you know if it's working or not and you can keep building on it or you can set it aside and go on to something new. So that's one of the reasons I like when appropriate this kind of approach, the quick block in and then, then you'll know. Okay, so we've got that atmosphere burning, a little bit of visual activity back there. Okay, let's go into the foreground. Do the same thing. Just suggest those top planes in there. We can, we can zoom in a little bit here. And I want to have this, maybe it's like a gold statue. Let's pick a golden color. And that'll be a nice accent to have, uh, with all the purple, I, I have some purple accents in there, having a little bit of gold might be a nice accent. And then there's gonna be that blue light once again, reflecting on it. So I'll actually, with the yellow of the gold, we'll actually get some greenish reflections. Remember back when we did the road to El Dorado, there was gold everywhere. And it's been a long time, but uh, at least back then, uh, in the late ni 1998, mm -hmm. I was an expert at painting gold. It was so. a very shiny movie. <laughs> <laughs> 1998, that was the year for mm -hmm. gold. And it, uh, you mentioned earlier, and I, I saw on the, the movie poster, uh, it's the 20th anniversary of uh, The Prince of Egypt. Yes, I, I wanted to mention that, and this mm -hmm. part of uh, bringing it up now. Uh, the movie came out in 1998, yeah. and here we are, here we are 20 years later. I want you to know how beautiful my hair was back in 1998. <laughs> um, I just want you to want you to know, because those days are long gone. I'm sure all that stress of, of doing movie backgrounds. Is... Well, I, I have kids too. Oh, that, that <laughs> definitely helps. So we'll get a few glints. So, you know, we have local color, the gold, and then we have the color of the light source, which is more of a cyan, cyan blue. And so I'm keeping that in mind as I'm putting a few little glints on there. And we might suggest a little bit of gold elsewhere. And do you always work with the colors first? John asks. I think we were talking about this earlier. We were, yeah. And uh, it's a really good question because I usually do, I've been at this a long time, and so I usually go straight into the color, but it's fairly common, and, and I still do sometimes as well. Sometimes a scene needs to be proven, like everyone needs to agree, yes, that's what the scene needs to look like, that's who needs to be in the scene. And color gets so complicated, and if you have people give you notes, well, you need to move the character over there and take the couch out, and your colors are too blue, and, 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 that's a nightmare. And so sometimes it's very useful to do a, a tonal sketch first, black and white, and sometimes even take it to a finish. And then at that point, you can use the Photoshop tools, you can kind of glaze colors, you can maintain your values and glaze colors into them. Though I find you always need to do your final painting opaquely, because the way colors digitally glaze on top of values is not how light works. So I kind of block in colors in my black and white painting, but then make sure the final colors are accurate with opaque painting. Uh, I hate to say it, but sometimes the mark of an amateur is that colors are simply glazed on without a real understanding of the interaction between light and local color. So that's something definitely to look out for. Great question, glad you asked. 
Okay, so back to that gold. Just get a little bit of, let's make it even, I don't want it too brown. A little bit of influence of that sky. Maybe a little darker. Okay. So we'll just suggest that there's some gold going on. Maybe drop a little bit in in the background, just a suggestion of it, and then get a few glints in there. So I'll just pick a color that I already have and suggest a few reflections, a few little, you know, little glints, little sparkles, something to give a little bit of visual activity. Let me turn my drawing off as well. Don't even need the drawing anymore. That's a nice thing about the block-in. Uh, yeah, you you can kind of feel where you're going. Mm -hmm. You you know what you have at that point, and you know if you need to abandon hope or if you can keep <laughs> keep at it. But a few little you know little sprinkle, a few little accents will be appropriate. You know, probably that would be decorative gold. There would be you know carving, sculpture, molding in there. So that can be nice. And uh, let's throw, you know, my reds are a little hot there. I'm gonna tone those down in the building. So let's bring that selection back up so I can keep everything clean. We'll bring up the land and we'll subtract out the foreground. And then we'll go and uh, we'll desaturate here. And I have to get on the right layer. Go back to my base layer. Okay, so it's just a little too strong. I want to pull that back down. Let's throw some uh, clouds in the sky. I'll bring my drawing back up. Uh, I mentioned uh, there's, there's a suggestion of a little character in there, so I'll throw something like that in a moment. Uh, let me have some clouds kind of point us back down in that kind of a direction. So we'll just go back to my go-to brush. And we'll uh, get the right selection up. We'll go to the sky. Okay. And then clouds, they're white, but in shadow they'd be a gray probably about the same value as the sky. So let's see if I can get something in that range. It looks about, looks about right. What do you think, Ren? Uh, good enough? I think so. <laughs> it's about, about the same value. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah it's going to look warm in contrast to the mm -hmm. blue, but I, I think that'll be an asset because uh, we have such a shock of blue over there that putting some warm clouds uh, into that area We'll, we'll break that up and not be too dominant. Mm -hmm. Because my idea is that we kind of go from the cyan to the blue to the gray purples, and then from the gray purples to the reds. And then with the reds, we have these little accents of green with the foliage to give a nice pop there. And then there's the pink, kind of the purple pink of the uh, uh, cherry blossom trees in the background. And I'm gonna wanna put that same color onto the character. So that'll be, those will be my final accents. So we'll just throw a little cloud at this. Nothing fancy, just throw that down. And let me go a little lighter over here. And then let me get a light. Okay, so sunlight, warm, kind of a warm white. Yeah, that looks about right. I think that'll do it. And we'll just pull that down We'll get a little bit of light sweeping in here. I think weather, weather pa patterns like clouds are also a um, really great way to help mood and environment. Uh, you know, um, uh, it's a little bit of a sore spot um, uh, because you are so very right 
and I was talking, there's a really great artist that I know a lot of you admire uh, named Ian McCaig. I, I had the great opportunity to do a workshop with him. And we were talking about how weather is underrepresented mm. in, uh, in concept art, at mm. least, and at that, that was maybe five years ago, and we were talking about the whole, uh, I think it's getting better now. Uh, one of the reasons was that it's so expensive to do, or at least it mm. was. Now there's off-the-shelf uh, software that can really, in movies, you know, make it much yeah. more seamless. It was so expensive, and I was, I was kind of saying, yeah, I think that's one of the primary reasons. And Ian said, no, that's not the real reason. I said, oh, what do you think it is? He said, uh, he said, most of the concept art has been coming out of Los Angeles, and you guys have no weather. <laughs> That's so true. It's just uh, sunny for days. Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, sometimes wow. I forget about yeah. weather because it's not a, a presence. And then here we are in the Bay Area where it's mm -hmm. crisp and, and beautifully cool. Yeah, you got well, Carl the Fog rolling in. Did yeah. you know the fog has a name? Uh, Carl, I did not His name know that. name is Carl okay. with a K. Okay, so. So I'm very moody. Yeah, a, a shout out to my, my wife and kids who are sweltering in about 110 <laughs> degrees and uh, down in Los Angeles yeah, right in, now. It's in the 60s and 70s on a typical day in San Francisco. Uh, glad I brought my long sleeve shirts. Oh yeah. You know, frankly, that's good enough for the cloud. Let's just throw a little, uh, what do we have? We have about five minutes or so? Three minutes left. Uh, Three for minutes left, okay. The challenge submission. So get your submissions in okay. if you'd like us to review. And if you don't get them in, um, in the next few minutes, um, I know we have one more uh, session and uh, coming up next is um, Anna Davis Court and um, they'll be able to review um, work then. So don't fret if you haven't gotten it in yet. So let me throw, I keep promising just throwing a little, uh, a little color accent here. Let me just throw that in, uh, in the next minute, uh, two and a half minutes. And I'm, I'm just going to do a shape. I'm not going to worry too much about it. So let's get a value that pops. Not too bright. I want it to be as much about the color as the value. Maybe in that range. And we'll just, just throw some color at it. Maybe it's a woman who has dark hair. We'll throw a little bit of dark hair on there. And then there's cool light coming down. We'll throw a little dark underneath, casting a little bit of a contact shadow and a little bit of cool. It's amazing cool. how in a few mm -hmm. strokes you can just build an environment very quickly. Uh, there, there's a lot to be said for suggestion and, mm. and that's actually an excellent observation because one of the hard lessons I learned uh, coming up was uh, what you don't put into an image is as important as what you hmm. do put in. Uh, you know, our images, pretty much everything we do, it's meant to be about something, right? That means it is not about everything else and there's a temptation to put everything else in there. But that tends to kind of water down and weaken our drawings uh, and our paintings. Sometimes we want those to really be that knockout punch. And if we put too much, it just won't be so uh, very relevant. I think that's also very, um, shows up in your plein air paintings a lot. I, I've noticed like you use sweeping strokes to get that suggestion of an environment in. Um, definitely check out Nathan's Instagram. Um, I see it posted up on the chat a little bit. And, um, I, do a, there. I, and I do a challenge. I'll throw this challenge out to you guys. Uh, tw a landscape in 20 strokes. We all know oh, wow. that uh, life drawing, you know, we all do the two minute life drawing gesture sketch. We know that's a great exercise. Well, how about the same thing for landscape painting? Landscape painting is so hard, we gotta find the bones of it first. So I throw out this challenge to my students and online and the hashtag is 20 stroke landscape. And uh, uh, it forces you to think. It's hard to do, it, it often doesn't work out, but it's a great, Exercise with that, I think we're at the zero mark. Yeah, let me open up a few more of these and All then right. we can jump in. So if you want to finish uh, that character. Got quite a lot of entries in and I'm, I'm excited to look at all of these. Oh, 
Okay, let's, I think I'm ready. Let, let's jump in and take a look at the challenge submissions. So um, for those of you who might have just tuned in, the challenge for today is to take uh, one of your favorite quotes and um, create a design um, in Photoshop with it. Uh, so to start off, we have uh, Akasha's here. You can also see it on the screen All there. Right. Um, really great use of um, the either a hand lettering style type or you may have lettered that yourself. We were nostalgic for a, uh, for a, for time. a time that wasn't yet over. Nina La Colour. I, I love the landscape. Oh, yeah. That's a nice design to the landscape. Yeah. Really great touch. Um, this is from John. Let me zoom out there. John, I'm glad to see you getting your uh, working on your head drawing chops. Yeah. It's uh, it's an important skill and uh, one I've I've kind of fanatically struggled with for a long time. So good for you. <laughs> I like to make myself believe it's really beautiful. I love the color in the eye here. It's like it's glowing. Uh, this is from Don Marie. Find a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Do you um, find that true, Nathan? That, that's good advice. You know, don't don't think um, your your job will ever, you know, be a be a breeze. They never are. <laughs> um, but uh, if if uh, if you're doing something that in the end you're excited about, and uh, a lot of artists say, um, uh, they say I don't always love the process of making art. You know, it's a real pull out your hair frustration. But they say, I love having made art. You know, you, uh, you have something you're proud of and you can say, I, I did it and I'm proud of. That's a, that's a big deal. So it's a, it's a beautiful quote and, uh, and the, desktop, uh, the desktop image uh, is ideal mm -hmm. and uh, you know, exactly relevant to how we all work anymore. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love that she put in a business card with her name on it oh, as well. Right. It's, I love the use of environment. Whoa, this is intense. Wow, that really grabs you. <laughs> this is from Bassett. Um, those eyes. Everything is design everything. Uh, it's, it, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Rand is a, was a great designer. This is from Timor. This is a quote from The Witcher, I think. Okay, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm staring at it because I'm, uh, I'm not totally familiar. Yeah. Geralt, uh, so that's, that's a quote from one of the characters. Yeah, the, the, I, okay. I, I haven't played it, but I know the character's name is Geralt, so he's the main character. And this is from Richard Einstein. I love it, I like the, the overlay here. The sepia tones. Uh, and very true quote, especially in this business, right? You yeah, gotta keep, absolutely. Gotta keep moving. Can't think too hard about any one thing. This is from Caroline. Really beautiful illustrated environment here. I love the mountains at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, the kind of science populist yeah. always talks about how um, the, the atoms that make up our bodies were forged in supernovas like we're, we're star yeah. stuff that's yeah. that's the material it's kind of a, a kind of a, a a beautifully frightening way to, to, to think of it this is from a mitt love the the, the, the photo, design of the yeah the photos perfect yeah. it it um, any image, one of the things I've learned the hard way, you can do an image that's right that nobody connects with, mm -hmm. or you can do an image that just instantly feels right, yeah. and, and the way you've cropped that photo. And uh, it has a, kind of that, that morning, low in the sky morning, yeah. morning light. So yeah, it and looks- with dreams right in the center. Very appropriate. Definitely. Ooh, another Einstein quote, this is from Adam. Love it. Love the, the color overlay. I like purple. Yeah. Works. Uh, yeah, my 
when my daughter tells me her favorite color, she says purple because she knows it's my favorite color. She likes Aww. it. But when she tells anyone else, she says it's pink. Of course. I, I like the nod to dad's favorite yeah. color. That's so sweet. It's from Lisa. Quote by Socrates. Cool. I love the, um, the emphasis on some of these words here. You got a little tinge of yellow up in the corner. It's from Oliver. Another great, you, you all are very good at designing your type. Did, did Kathleen teach you? <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe you're the designer here, Ren. I actually, my, my very first job, I worked in the graphic services department in college mm -hmm. and got to do graphic design. Uh, and, and so I, I love it, but definitely don't have an expertise in yeah. graphic design. But you use Rubylith. I, and we'll just, I do, but I use it in an illustrative way. Right, right, a, yeah. a non non traditional. That's, and we're not going to tell you what Ruby Lith no, is you if look you're that up. yeah, if you're if you're in the know, yeah. either you're my age or or you have the flame of youth and uh, yeah. inventiveness uh, <laughs> like like our very own Ren here. This is from Chelsea. Great great overlay color. I I love uh, whether I I'm not sure if this is a black and white photo originally, but Putting a color overlay makes the photo pop. I think you have those. Um, like she has a really high cheekbone, and um, the light and dark that play on on her skin there is really lovely. And I think it pops even more when it's monochromatic. And this is Mariana. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end and stop. It's from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, that that takes a little little bit of chin stroking yeah. for that for that quote. <laughs> Definitely. And David. That's an interesting image. Yes, yeah, it I'm, is. I'm, uh, you know, it's funny about about images. I, I feel like sometimes either either you've got to have an instant read, people just get it, or you have to make them want to come into it and spend time and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I think this has that kind of draw, you want to kind of dig into it and you know, think what, what kind of camera it was and uh, the angles there, but it looks great. Yeah. David, is that you in that fisheye photo? This is from Walter. Love the way the type is nestled in yeah. under that ship. That's beautiful. This is from Heather. That the fox jumped into that snow. <laughs> Eyes closed, head first, can't lose. Agree. Sometimes I feel like that. You just gotta dive in. This is from Dorit. This is a really Interesting photo. And I love the way the type goes down the staircase. That that's that's really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The quote is apropos, and the presentation of it uh, really fits. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice. The the photo has just the right angle to it. That's a yeah. good one. This is from Claire. A lovely Yoda. <laughs> do with Photoshop or do not. <laughs> Do with PS. Yeah. There you go. This is great. I feel like there's a great use of uh, highlighting here as well. Yeah, I like that one I closed and yeah. then I opened. Grabs you. A lot of illustrators do that. The old school illustrators would make one eye more important than the other mm. one for a, for a close up. I feel like that's a popular DreamWorks thing to do as well. You've got that eyebrow raise. Uh, oh, the DreamWorks, the yeah. DreamWorks eyebrow yeah. raise, yeah. yeah. And I'm not an animator, um, uh, because I, I can't speak to that, but I know that's definitely a thing. Yeah. yeah. And this last one is from Linda. Like a Rorschach image. When you connect to the silence within you, that is when you can make sense of the disturbance going on around you. Uh, yeah, the, the Rorschach quality of it is nice. Mm -hmm. and it's, Kind of unity with variety, right? It's, yeah. it's random, but it has structure mm -hmm. in it. It feels it feels really good. Yeah. 
What do you all see in that Rorschach? Yeah. I kind of see a, like a, a mouse in the middle. Do we really want to ask that question? I don't know. We, the, <laughs> I would love to see people's answers to that. <laughs> I see a baboon. Mm, I can see that too. All right, thank you all for your submissions. And just a reminder, if you weren't able to get your submission in for the challenge in time, um, Anna Daviscourt is up next and she'll be reviewing the last batch. Um, and she will be on after us in about, what time is it now? In about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Yeah. So everyone has another challenge they're working on that we'll take a look at tomorrow, yes? yes? Excellent, okay, Absolutely. Looking, looking forward to seeing your best work. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how about, uh, I, have, I have a little more I'd like to do here, yeah. and, and then, then... I heard you have a bit of a, a challenge for you all. <laughs> I do, I, I also have a homework assignment for you that I wanna throw out. Um, uh, don't do it tonight, do the challenge <laughs> tonight, but uh, there's an exercise that I'm gonna throw at you here in a few minutes at the end that I just think is gonna be a helpful, uh, helpful way to, to learning about those properties of color. So I'll leave you with a little suspense on what that's gonna be, mm -hmm. and we'll put a few more strokes on our image here. Okay, so I know exactly what this thing needs. It needs emphasis. We're, we're talking about the idea that a picture means to be about something. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna throw a few layers over this that will pull our interest back towards that character. Because ultimately, you know, buildings are important and interesting sculptures. The eye tends to go to a person. A person is more psychologically important uh, to us typically. And in a picture, often you wanna use color and design to reinforce what's most important in the image. So. I'm gonna throw just a little bit more atmosphere on here, and then I'll make those, uh, I'll kinda of do a contrast adjustment, and then I think we'll be in great shape. Okay, I've got about, we're, we're finishing at too sharp, is that right? Um, we're finishing at 155. 155, yeah. okay. Well, that's just around the right amount of time. Great. Okay. Okay. Atmosphere. I'm just, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of cool in important areas, and then we'll be set with that. Okay, so let's zoom in and put a little bit of cool light on our foliage here. So a little bluer, a little lighter is, is how I like to think of it. And that's why the color picker is so nice. The color picker here literally is designed in terms of hue, saturation, and value. So uh, it works perfectly. So I'll just, just literally uh, the, the top areas, I'll get a little bit of that in to suggest cool light coming in. I'll do a little bit of the same over here. Let me grab a brush that might have a little bit of a leafy kind of a quality. And we'll go back, let me grab that same cool color. So just thinking about top planes. The top planes are catching a little bit of light there. I want to get a little green on the ground. There's just grass or, or whatever it might be on there. Throw a little bit of that at it. Blend it up a little bit. A little bit of that cool. The front plane would probably catch, just catch a little bit of light there. A little bit of the same happening back in here. Top planes. I don't want to get too busy. I want to keep this simple, but I want to suggest keep the suggestion going. Chat's quieted down. I think we're all kind of mesmerized.
some of those, it's too far back for those hot reds, so I'm just kind of knocking some of those back a little bit. Do you ever uh, squint to, to see what's the brightest point in your, in your image? I feel like that's, that's a common thing to do. I definitely do it, just to make sure that I have the right focal point. Absolutely. Uh, squinting is invaluable, like in landscape painting, for instance. There's a billion details. What do you do with all of that? Mm -hmm. We'll just squint and see the simpler shapes. And that's a very helpful way to simplify. Okay, so I just threw a darkening layer on there. And then I'm gonna erase out to get a transition. Get a little light down on our character. And so that subdues what's happening there. I might even wanna push that idea a little bit further. So see the difference? The eye is really pulled over into those clouds right now. And with those adjustment layers, that really gives us that transition of lighting. You know, the light's brighter on the one side, transitioning over, and it really helps keep our focus in this more important area. So we have a little bit of visual balance and a uh, little bit of grouping, a lot of unity with variety. So in two minutes, I'm gonna give you that homework assignment. Let's just hit a couple of things. So I think we're in, I think we're in great shape here mm -hmm. in terms of a comp. I want to subdue that purple just a little bit. We'll go to desaturate. I'm going to pull that back a bit. Uh, I also want to darken the lights a little bit. So we'll uh, go into burn and dodge here. And I want to just kind of group what's happening back there a bit. Not that, <laughs> this. Val says that this has transformed so much from the beginning, and I agree. It's amazing how quickly you can pull mm. something together. Years of experience does that, for sure. Okay, and then with our last 30 seconds, what I wanna do is just sprinkle in a little bit of visual interest. So just, uh, I'll, I'll just get a light here, just, I might be a little more color specific with more time, but you know, just there's a little uh, visual activity happening, a few little glints of, of cool light hitting here and there. I mostly wanna concentrate it though, a little more around the character and pull us in that kind of a direction. Okay, do we have five minutes left right now? We do. Okay, so that's what we've got for now, but for, you know, for, for a short block in, uh, I think we really have something we can work with. So mm -hmm. here's an idea. We can push it this way or that way. We can play with it. Tomorrow, we're gonna bring emotional considerations to it and the considerations that, uh, that you're gonna give in your homework will be Are this. you guys ready for a homework assignment? <laughs> okay, so uh, I have another homework assignment for you tomorrow. Tomorrow's a fun one. This one is taking your medicine, but we all know, you know, you gotta eat your broccoli before dessert. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have to be experts. Hue, saturation, value, gotta be experts. So take a value and see how very different you can make it look. So here, my middle value, uh, these squares in the middle, they're exactly the same value, but in this context, it looks like a dark. That context, it looks lighter. And so I'm using contrast to make uh, an apparent simultaneous contrast, a difference. And so when we paint, everything we put down is next to something else. And that's where the subtlety and the magic can happen. So that's value if we go to hue, Good for time. Okay, we're good. Uh, 
if we go for hue, you know, we got to really pull the rich subtlety out of our color hues. And so pick a color, in this case I picked a middle green, and then put different colors around it and see if you can make it look like a different hue. One of mine you'll see uh, here, it looks more like a yellow green, the other one looks much more like a cooler green in contrast. And when you have an expertise in tweaking color, you won't have to be so heavy handed, so obvious, so forced, and you'll get that richness out of your color. Okay, so that's value and then hue. Now let's go to saturation. So here I have a green, and my job then is to make that green feel saturated in one context, desaturated in the other context. So saturated green here, but the exact same green feels very different in this other context. And then one more, because sometimes just thinking about warm and cool and temperatures can give a little magic to our work. Sometimes when you feel like your image is turned into mud, if it's warm mud, it just needs a little bit of cool temperature. If it's gray cool mud, it just needs a little bit of warmth. So you'll see that exactly the same gray is warm in this context and rather cold in this context. So try that out. Try that exercise with those three properties of color, maybe throw in warm, cool contrast, and your expertise at color subtlety will come up, up, and up. Fantastic. So everyone who's interested in doing a little bit of color theory tonight, uh, if you're done with your challenge submission, jump into this. I think it's really good. Um, practice, even for some of those more experienced artists out there. I want to practice this now. Um, day, yeah, daily, pro I, I still do simple little studies mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis. I gotta, yeah, you get so caught up in, in everything else, you gotta come back to that foundation all the time. Definitely. Uh, let's take one last look at um, that image that oh. you finished. Okay, let's see. Escape, pop up Photoshop. And we'll frame it. Screen that. That is beautiful. Great. And so we're going to be working on this tomorrow as well? Yeah, you know, there's a good chance um, uh, playing it by ear, but most likely I'm going to take this image. Mm -hmm. How are we doing for time? We got okay, about a couple two minutes. Left. Two minutes? Yeah, we'll okay. Be good. Yeah, I, okay, I see the timer. <laughs> I see the timer there. Yeah. So uh, I want to take this. Uh, most of us, probably all of us, in some way we want to be storytellers. And uh, lots of times, you know, the same location, it needs to be day, it needs to be night, it needs to make the audience feel happy, feel sad. And so we have to have the ability, not just changing what's in the scene, but changing the quality of color, light, and design to elicit different moods from the audience. So mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll take this image, we'll push it in all different directions and mm -hmm. see if we can make that happen. Sounds great. Um, well, we are almost at the end of our time today, but we have two more days ahead of us. Um, really excited to see what else we do. Um, so thank you all for joining today. We have one more stream up, coming up next. Um, we have Anna Daviscourt and Ari as our host. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. Anna's in the house, so uh, we're, the house. We're, <laughs> we're excited. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, guys. Fantastic.